the vinyl record, a nearly universal symbol for music worldwide. For generations, people have been dropping the needle on their favorite albums, and throughout most of the 20th century, vinyl records were a staple of any music lover's household. However, in the face of new competitors, who offered cheaper and more convenient alternatives, vinyl records could not keep up. Their decline in popularity was inevitable, but just when it seemed like vinyl was dead, things suddenly took a turn. Records as we know them were conceived in the late 1800s, and their impact can't be overstated. For the first time in history, music was no longer confined to live performances, and people could listen to their favorite music from the comfort of their homes. In their early days, records were heavy, brittle, and had a low playtime of 3-5 to five minutes per side. Nicknamed the 78 after its speed of 78 revolutions per minute, or RPM, the 10-inch record made from shellac was the standard format until Columbia Records released the first 12-inch 33 and a third RPM records in 1948. These new records were higher quality and had an increased playtime of over 20 minutes per side, giving them the nickname LP, short for long play. Additionally, they were made of a new material, polyvinyl chloride, or as it's better known, vinyl. With their longer playtime, LPs catalyzed a new era dominated by a new musical format, the album. <laughs> Opening up endless doors for artistic creativity and skyrocketing the popularity of records. For the majority of the 20th century, the vinyl record was the foundation of music as a whole and a staple in households worldwide. To learn more about the culture surrounding records at this time, we spoke to Paul Dignan, a visual artist and avid music lover who's been buying and collecting records since his youth. My name is Paul Dignan. Um, I'm a visual artist, a painter. Um, you're in my studio. One of the first albums I ever bought, I think it was maybe about 11 years old. And I bought Kraftwerk's Trans Europe Express there. That was my, one of my first albums. Like, and I've, I've, I lost it years ago. I've, I lent it to somebody and I, I've got a fair idea. There's a guy back in Scotland who's got a lot of my records that I would like back, but I don't know if I'll ever see them. UK was really like, music is big, like, you know, bands, whatever. I was in a band, I got, I was in a punk band for two weeks and I got fired because I wasn't angry enough. Punk, still listen to that even though I'm like 60 years old now. In the UK at that time, to be sort of 16, 17 and 19 in the mid 70s, when that came on, I actually bought the Sex Pistols, never mind the bollocks, the week it came out and I still have it. I'd never sell that. But I bought, I've bought another copy because I don't play it that much. It's in really good condition, which is shocking because it's been played at parties, it's, you know, when we were that young. It was kind of like you swapped records with people, you lent them out. I, you would go to parties and you would take a bag with your favourite albums with you. I've actually got, still got a lot of them behind me here. It's how you got introduced to new bands. It's part of the culture. I really like to meet, like, meet, I got to know guys that are like dealers, you know, and you'll chew the fat with them. One of them, he sold me something, it was five bucks because it was in such bad condition, but there was nothing wrong with it. It's that, that album there by the doors, and it's actually uh, a 1970s pressing. I cleaned the record, I got, I built an ultrasonic cleaner, and once I cleaned it, it plays beautifully, and it's, um, it's, it's worth a lot more than five bucks. You got to keep looking. You, you got to keep looking. However, any technology has a shelf life and vinyl records were no different. At the height of vinyl's popularity, new competitive technologies were already in the works with the goal of overtaking vinyl's unparalleled grip on the market. 
The first competitor entered the ring in the 70s, though it had been in development for over a decade by that point. The cassette tape. With the popularization of new technologies like boomboxes and Sony's Walkman, cassettes quickly became a success with their compact size and portability, and by 1984, they were already outselling vinyl. Shortly after the boom of cassettes, the compact disc, or CD, was introduced in 1982. With their near-perfect sound quality, longer playtime, and travel-ready size, CDs immediately found success in the market, replacing vinyl records as the main format for albums and outselling cassettes by 1991. At this point, records were practically obsolete, and it seemed as if the age of vinyl was gone for good, with the LP left as nothing more than a relic of music history. In the current digital era of music, characterized by declining CD sales and the growth of MP3 files and streaming services, physical manifestations of music were becoming few and far between. But just when everyone least expected it, vinyl record sales jumped dramatically in 2007. To understand more about why people are returning to records today, we talked to Isaac Tamblin, a member of our documentary team who is also an avid record collector. My name is Isaac Fox Tamblin. Uh, I'm a university student and I collect vinyl records. Honestly, for me, I feel like the reason I collect records is mostly that I just like, I enjoy the process of putting on a record. You know, you put on the needle, like you watch the thing spin around. And there's something about the physicality of it they think is cool, that like the sound of a record is literally just coming from, you know, the grooves in the vinyl. I think for me, like listening to a record, um, compared to streaming, I would say, you know, you have to take the record out, you can lick the cover a little bit, like you pull it out of the sleeve, you put it on the turntable, you put the needle on, like all that stuff. You're kind of going through these motions that make you feel a little bit more connected, I feel like, to the listening experience. Like it's just a fun little process that is just sort of absent from streaming, which is part of what I find fun about records. I feel like there's this kind of feeling of detachment from the things that you consume or interact with when everything is digital, everything is viewed through this like uniform lens of a screen, a web page, an app. So I think the physicality and tangibility of a record is just such a welcome thing. I think it's really cool that records are coming back as this kind of cultural force because I think the fact that people are turning to this like physical music that they can like put on and listen to and collect. I think it's a fun thing and I think it's cool. <laughs> the resurgence of vinyl record sales came as a surprise, but what was thought to be a one-time spike was shown to be a steady pattern. As time has gone on, the trend has continued, reaching over 41 million records sold in 2022, surpassing CD sales for the first time in decades. More and more artists are pressing their albums on vinyl, and record stores are once again regaining their status as a place to find music and connect with people. To gain some insight into the world of record stores, we spoke with Trevor Worsell, owner of Sound Fixation, a record store in Stratford, Ontario. I'm Trevor Worsell. I've had the shop for seven years. My favorite part of running a record store is the human element of it. It's really nice. Uh, just hearing stories and, you know, conversations between strangers happen here all the time. And, you know, friendships can bloom from that. So, yeah, the humanity. In the store, I've always had a wide group of people coming in, uh, from young people just starting out to middle-aged people that actually got rid of all of their stuff and regret it and they're wanting to start again men, women of all age groups, people that don't know very much, and people that know a lot more than I do. It's really interesting. I think a lot of people, they come in and they, they remember what records used to be sold for, price-wise, or 
the fact that when everybody was just giving away their collections or dumping them at the side of the road, you know, they sort of think that records were basically useless at one point. And so then when they come in and they see some of the prices, they forget that inflation has hit everything, like you used to be able to go to the movies for 250. If you were to buy a book, which is also an analog experience, how many times will you read the book? Probably less than a handful of times. If you go to the movies, you know, that's expensive and you saw it once. And then a record, how many times will you listen to a record? You could quite possibly listen to a record hundreds of times. And that's the way I think people should look at it. <laughs> More bang for your buck. More head bang for your buck. <laughs>